Hi there and welcome to Thursdays with Annette at 2 o'clock. I'm so glad you've joined me. I hope you've got pen and paper and a cuppa because today's show is all about questions and answers. That's right, it's all the questions you wanted to know and we're going to try and cram as many of them in as we can. Uh, but let's just go back to last week because it was fantastic. We had over 20,000 views on how I make the best scones ever. I'm so glad we did it again. And some of the comments that we had, I just want to read them to you. Um, Marlene wrote, I've never put eggs in my scones or mixed the butter and the milk together. So it sounds so much easier, I'm going to try it. Um, thanks, Annette, your books are the best. Well, thank you, Marlene. Now, Sally actually made the simple scones and said they were the best she'd ever made. Go, Sally. Uh, thank you, Annette, for sharing all your tips. We're so grateful for you. And I know I'm grateful for you too, everybody. Uh, now, Andrea said that she's never uh, been a great at you know, making scones, but she's definitely going to give it a try because they're her hubby's favourite. He loves a, a good scone. But what was really fizzy and fabulous was that Andrea then later on sent us a picture of her batch of scones and they looked amazing. They looked so delicious you could have just eaten them off the paper. So good on you, Andrea. I'm so excited for everyone that's tried to make the scones this week and had success, which you really can't fail with my way. Now, Marissa um, has made the scone scrolls uh, in book three and they're her hubby's favourite and he likes to take them as leftovers for work. Um, they're a really big hit in her house, so I thought that was great. And now Anne actually shared the video because you know we ask you to share, because especially if you want to win the prize. And stop it right now, I'm feeling super generous because this is our last episode for season two. So I'm thinking, got to be big with the giveaway, so stay tuned. But back to the gorgeous Anne, she'd actually, as I said, she'd um, shared the video with her friend. Now her friend actually made the scone, so I'm hoping she gave you some honey because that would have been a bit mean. Um, and Tanya, look, she said, thank you, Annette, I'm glad you repeated the show. And so am I. Uh, I mean, we got some great afternoon tea scones uh, from the show last week as well. Now, we, we could watch the scone being make, made, which she thought was really interesting because I've always been able to use my scones as door knockers, as they are so hard. Um, I thought that was really funny. And normally she said she rolls them out with a rolling pin and uh, she's gonna leave that in the cupboard and follow my technique. So I think she's decided she wants to be the scone queen too. So fun show last week, thanks for that. Now we had the fabulous prize of a, uh, an apron for all the winners. So let's do a drum roll please because we had three fabulously excited women and it was Tammy Cooper, Lisa O'Donnell and Natalie Williams were the winners to get the very exclusive and special fizzy fabulous apron that I wear in the kitchen. Now, you know what? I decided to try something different this morning and I wanted to show you because we've been out to a couple of functions in the last week or so because of Pink October. And I thought, you know, I've got some friends coming for an afternoon tea on Sunday and I might make some scones. Look what I did. Thanks, Diane. I actually made, because we decided to test it, I made some pink scones. How fabulous for Pink October. I must admit, uh, they're maybe a little fuchsia more than pink because they're a bit, um, a bit dark. Now, I put, I used the normal scone recipe and I put in two teaspoons of pink colouring, not red, pink colouring. So if you want to do fuchsia like I've done, you'll need two. But I would suggest if you want pink, you know, like a lighter pink, then put a teaspoon of the pink colouring in. So that's our afternoon tea this afternoon. And I reckon if you've got any events coming up over October, why not do the pink scones? How fantastic is that? Okay, so now this show is all about question and answers. But one thing that's happening in a couple of weeks that I want to tell you about, which is going to be fantastic, is I'm actually going to be on a stand at the Good Food and Wine Show in Brisbane. Now, it's the last weekend in the month uh, of October. And are we on the H17 stand, Diane? Yes. H17. You guys need to come over. I'll be cooking. Um, we're going to have so much happening on our stand, giving out samples and everything like that. So put that in your diary. And um, I am going to be giving away 10 free tickets to the show um, through uh, the newsletter, is it? 
So if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, you need to get on there because if you live in the Brisbane, uh, Sunshine Coast, whatever area, you could win a free ticket, which is fantastic. So I'll remind you about that later anyway. Now, um, let's get into the questions because we've got so many and I really want to get to you guys that have asked these fabulous questions. Now, Jackie McLeod, she actually gave us a couple of questions. The first one I thought was a really good one. She says, does meat weigh the same raw and as cooked? Now, normally they say it's about 25% you lose when you cook meat. Um, for example, though, I find that if you've said 120 grams of meat, it'll probably shrink down to about 90 grams, uh, Jackie. So just to give you an idea, but maybe about 25% you lose going from raw to cooked. She also asked about the SPC plum sauce that's in the chicken and plum, uh, chi uh, chicken plum kebabs. I was just like, what? What do you mean you can't find it in the shops? We love that. So we've tried um, to call them, the lines ringing engaged, don't know what's happening there. It's also not on their website. So methinks it might be discontinued, Jackie. Um, so the recipes that use that is the chicken and plum sauce, the sticky, oh, that's out of book three. Um, the sticky pork chops out of book four, oh my gosh, favorite recipe ever, spicy chicken plum kebabs in book six. So this is what, um, and I, might, I have a jar left, so I'm, it'll be like gold to us, but this is what normally you would use in the recipes. But this is the other alternate that I've found that works really well is the fountain, the fountain plum sauce. So just replace it with that. So I hope you're writing all this down because there's going to be lots of things like that today. Um, another product that we've just recently found out by someone asking us, so this is fantastic, is the sword wraps. Now they used in a recipe the, the crunchy dippers in book seven and they have been discontinued. I'm starting to really be concerned about supermarkets because they just take things off without even caring. And I mean, these the crunchy dippers are awesome. But relax, if you're a big fan, I have an alternate because that's what I'm all about. And so I tried these out yesterday and they were fantastic. So that's the, um, the alternate that you'd be using now. And I'll read it out. It's the Mission Low GI Wraps. And uh, I think you get um, six in them. And so it, obviously they're round, whereas the sword wraps were um, oblong. Um, but that's okay, just cut them in the strips and do them exactly like you do. And a couple of them will have a sort of a, uh, an edge to them that's a little different. So that's definitely worth trying that one instead. It works really well. Now, um, now when you want to have any questions like that, the best place to go for discontinued products or anything like that is the frequently asked questions on our website. So we try and keep up as current as we can. So if you're not sure, just go to that anytime and you'll probably find the answer there. Now, Lynn Bennett, my gosh, do you know Lynn? I just love you. She makes aprons and she sent me and Diane an apron this week. How gorgeous is she? Do you love yours, Diane? Oh, she loves it. We're busy, fabulous. Thank you, Lynn. That was a lovely gift to you. But her question was, uh, what are your thoughts on cutting out carbs? Now, that's a great question um, because it really, to me, is an important part of your nutritional um, food intake. You can't just cut out a food group. It really is dangerous. And carbs are great for our brain, our you know, thinking and going like, you know, thinking about all the things we want to do and that if you get fuddled up, often that's because you haven't had enough carbs in your day. And also they give you energy. And I, I need lots of energy, I'll tell you, in my busy day. It's really about the quantities you use, Lynn. So for example, if you've got a plate and you've filled it up with rice to put a curry on, then you've definitely overdone your carbs. Now, when I was losing my weight, I would have half a cup of rice cooked, but when I went to maintenance, I went to three quarters of a cup cooked. So it really is about portions. And same with pasta. I, when I was spaghetti bowl, I always just had one cup of cooked pasta. And so, you know, instead of having a big bowl of pasta like this, which is making it quite high in carbs, everything in moderation is the key. But you'll find the answers in a lot of these sort of things, like, the, you know, the, the portion plates. They clearly tell you, and you, you'll see this on my website, this is for your vegetables and your salad, this is for your carbs, your low GI carbs are really good, and here is your proteins. So that you can see that, yes, but you don't want that whole plate filled with carbs, 
And same with cereal. Uh, you know, you can look on the side here and it'll tell you whether, how many cups of cereal. And that's the thing, don't have two cups of cereal, three quarters of a cup, and you're still going to have that energy and the brain's going to be working and carbs will be your friend, Lynn. Now, Margaret Peachy said, Annette, you said while making the scones last week um, that to measure two tablespoons of the margarine to get 30 grams. Now, Australian tablespoons are 20 mils, so would two tablespoons give you 40 grams? Great question. Now, everywhere in the world, apart from Australia, the tablespoon is 15 mils. And I've always worked with that. And so you'll know if you've got my measure spoons, this is why I made them up, so you could have them and you'd be completely confident that it's a 15 mil is what you need for a tablespoon. Um, the teaspoon obviously is five, um, one and a half tablespoons is 7.5. Um, and so, for example, the margarine, it works really well as two tablespoons. But if you're using breadcrumbs or parsley or spices, the weight is completely different. So you cannot just say that, um, that it's the right weight until you actually do it yourself. But with the margarine, uh, definitely, um, Margaret, it is two tablespoons equals 30. So a tablespoon is 15 mils of the margarine. Now, Cass Hindley. Hi, Annette. In one of your live videos, you said you don't like sweeteners, so you don't use them. Now, my husband is a diabetic, so I use sweeteners and raw sugar. Is this okay to do so? Absolutely, Cass. You know, your husband, you know, anyone, people with diabetes really need to use the artificial sweeteners. I get it. Um, so um, that's a definite one. Look, whether it, you need raw or white or honey, they're all kind of on the same par, to be honest. Um, and honey, sometimes people think, oh, honey's so healthy, but it's quite dense. So you can often get too much sugar with that. Um, now, when you also think about my recipes, I do only use a little bit of sugar. I try to use as least as I can, but if it's a sweet thing, you have to have a little bit of sugar in it, don't you? So, I mean, a third of a cup in a, a cake, which serves 12, is really not a problem. And I think that when I, I tried them with artificial sweeteners very early on, and they taste horrible. They don't keep as well, they get a bit hard, um, and they taste like diet food. So, if you're not a person with uh, diabetes, and we've got Mandy Thompson, who's actually on that subject, said, is it a good idea to substitute equal, ta equal tablets for your coffee tea and equal spoon for spoon sweetener for your cereal instead of sugar? Now, the problem I have with artificial sweetener is that it, it's very sweet and it keeps your sweet tooth alive and yet you're actually not having anything sweet. So it really confuses your brain. And they've proven that people that, um, for example, have a lot of sweet uh, sweeteners will crave more sugar. And that's why I don't like them. I don't like... Um, I'd rather just a little bit of sugar or do what I did way back. I cut out sugar from my tea and coffee and it took me a couple of weeks to even put a cup of coffee in my hand because it tasted so sour and bitter. But now if, if you put sugar in my tea or coffee, I would gag on it. And so it's really probably one of those habits that a healthy person probably needs to start off straight up so that you take that with you for the rest of your life. Because if you have six cups of tea a day with two teaspoons of sugar, that's adding up, isn't it? Now, Ellen Haywood has another product that she's been searching for, and it was the jungle curry paste. Now, she can't find it anywhere, and um, that jungle curry paste is in book seven with the jungle uh, chicken curry, the jungle chicken curry, which is fabulous. Now, this is actually in the frequent asked questions because it's actually been a while since that's been discontinued, and that's why I updated a lot of my cookbooks um, you know, all my cookbooks because of that. Now, the one that's being used now in the new updated version cookbooks is the Nayonya, Nayonya, N-Y-O-N-Y-A, Nonya. Can you see that? Um, it's an AM brand and it's a Nonya curry paste and that is what I used instead and it works fabulous. So for those that love that jungle curry like Ellen, this is your replacement from now on. So that's fantastic. And on that subject about, we had a gorgeous lady, Lauren Skye. She wanted to know about the upgraded um, and the updated cookbooks and should she get them? And I go, well, look, you know what? For the different ingredients that are now out, it's great to know an updated recipe. Um, I've got lots of things that I've done in the new book, like there's new photos, new styles, new covers, as you can tell. 
and we've updated ingredients. So what I suggest you do is check out later on and Diane is going to put a link on the feeds with the link to where you can see all the changes that have been made in the seven cookbooks so you know because there's quite a lot of them and that way you will know. Rebecca Costa, um, she says to me, you mentioned um, weeks ago you should weigh cheese for toasted sandwiches. So how much grams of served should low fat grated cheese be for a toasted sandwich? Great question because you know we can overdo our fillings in Sangers. Um, so I would say 30 grams of grated cheese in a toasted sandwich or sliced cheese is enough for a toasted sandwich. So I hope that helps you, Rebecca. Now, Dee Warwick, hi Dee. Um, with the warm weather on the way, I like sandwiches for lunch but get bored with the same old, same old, quick and simple sandwich fillers, please. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go, Dee, to book five because I've actually created a whole section on sandwich fillings. And I'm talking nothing boring here, honey. Teriyaki chicken, Thai chicken, turkey cranberry, tuna salad, roast beef with uh, tomato chutney, chicken Waldorf, chili beef salad, um, smoked salmon, satay chicken, mango chicken curry, Moroccan chicken. And then you go in and there's toasted ones as well, like, you know, your jackals and that. So there is your solution for that one. Easy done. Now, Jackie asked, my husband is on level three in book six at the masterclass menu plan. So this is this book here we're talking about that's got the masterclass in it. Now, does he eat all of level one and also the extras for level three? And I thought this is a good question because you don't want to be confused. Now, what happens, Jackie, is that if you're on level three, for example, you will have all of level one. So a husband gets, your husband gets all of level one, right? He disregards level two and then just goes to level three and has that as well. So for example, some days he might get two sandwiches and you know that's okay because when you're on that higher level, then you'll need that. So just tell him to go all of level one and the snacks and then whatever's in book three, uh, level three as the extras, I'm sorry, level three, he gets them as well. And actually in book five, in the updated version, um, I've actually done level, four levels in the 28 day menu plan in book five as well, uh, which was only level, I only went to two levels in the older version. So that's fantastic. Now, um, we had um, got a couple more questions here. Now, Penny Jones asked, can you uh, only have the shakes for breakfast? And I get the question because they're titled breakfast shakes. Well, Penny, they are something you can have at any time. They're a great snack. I love the, the chocolate, the wicked chocolate uh, in the afternoon to get me through the dinner. Yesterday we were at a fabulous lunch for the um, uh, Cindy McKenzie Foundation for the um, Pink October. I had salmon and salad and all that stuff, uh, vegetables and beautiful food. I had a shake for dinner. I really wasn't that hungry, but I wanted something. So what you do is you add 75 grams of fruit to the shake and blend it up and it becomes a light meal. It's a meal replacement if you add that 75 grams of fruit. So I hope that helps you there, Penny. You can have it breakfast, lunch or dinner. I wouldn't suggest you have them like every day, you know, three meals a day. That's ridiculous. We have teeth for a reason. We need to eat, but you can have it. You can swap it around. It doesn't have to just be breakfast. Now, the gorgeous Sally Ainsworth said, any ideas on what I can do in the afternoon after work to de-stress? other than eating or shopping. Oh my God, seriously, what's wrong with shopping, Sally? I mean, you know, I love it. But we, Diane and I had a discussion about this because we said, well, what do we do after work? And we, we went to the craft thing. You know, um, I love to crochet. Uh, Diane's doing those, um, what are those drawing things that you're doing? Mandela. Mandelas, she's making mandelas up where you colour them in the, I mean, fabulous. Um, but you need to do something that keeps your hands busy. Um, gardening, if you've got a garden or if you've got pot plants and that, do some stuff with that. Gentle exercise is another fantastic to de-stress like yoga or tai chi. Uh, meditation would be fantastic um, just to get you out of that stress um, thing because I know Sally's a teacher so we're here in your dial. Um, but my question to you, Sally, is are you drinking enough water in the day? Now, let's be honest, Sally, are you? Because they've proven that if you don't have enough water in the day, later on in the afternoon or in the evening, you actually crave sweet things. I know, shut up. Who would know? 
but that's true. So Sally, I'm asking you, is that maybe a solution for you? Um, Sonia Ann Sanderson said, can side dishes be made into a meal by doubling the serving sizes? For example, Caesar salad, Greek salad. Yes, absolutely. That's a fabulous idea. You've just got to, uh, the side dishes can be doubled and made into meals if you wish. Angela Palmer, is a low fat diet best long term? Um, great question, Angela. And it's really to me all about the low saturated fat diet. I don't sort of say just low fat. It's the saturated fat that we've got to be careful of because that's what affects our heart and health. Now, this is what is recommended by the Australian Dietary Guidelines. And I really watch closely on that, especially when I do my menu plans and that. So um, I would suggest that you look at that healthy overall diet that incorporates all the food groups in moderation and a low saturated fat diet's perfect. My last one is Mal Mandel Madeline Russell. Which of your recipes do you think are best for weekly meal prep? And what recipes of yours are the most budget friendly? Now this could be a whole show and I reckon that maybe, you know, if we're doing it next year, I might even do something on that on budget meals. Do you, what do you reckon guys? Give me a thumbs up on that. I reckon it's a great topic. But look, a lot of my recipes are really cheap to make. Um, and I, I think that on a budget, this is fantastic. But my favourite go-to is mince. Any of the recipes with mince? Um, we did a vote on Facebook, um, was it last week or this week that we did, and the macaroni beef from book two won recipe of the year. Yeah, most popular. And if you haven't had the macaroni beef, stop it. You have not tried it. What are you doing? Get the book out, book two, and make it. But, you know, with that, you've got the grated vegetables, macaroni noodles, the mince, so cheap to make and goes a long way. But I also have an article I wrote on, and what did I call it? It was called um, Get Excited About Mince. I know. And I'm going to put the link to that on the page as well for you because there's lots of tips on uh, mince as well because you can also freeze my recipes. So when mince is on special or if a certain food um, is cheap, you can bulk up and make a few different recipes with it and freeze them. And you'll see that in all the recipes it says whether it can be frozen or not and how long. Okay, we did well, didn't we? Now, don't forget, you've got to come and find me the last weekend in October at the Good Food and Wine Show and we're going to be giving tickets away on our newsletter. So um, you need to join that. I mean, who knew that weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? It's crazy, isn't it? And I'm having a break for two weeks. Uh, this is our last episode for season two um, and I'm back on the 2nd of November. So put in your diary now on your phone, 2nd of November, which is a Thursday, of course, because hello, Thursday with it at two o'clock and I'm going to be in the kitchen and um, we're going to be having a great time with that. Bill, what were you saying, Dal? One oh, one o'clock, yes, depending where you live. Sydney, Melbourne, all that, it's two o'clock, but Queensland and whatever, it's one o'clock. Just check your times. Uh, while daylight savings going. Thank you for pointing that out. Now, I'm going to see you in two weeks. Don't forget also that I'm going to be giving something away this week and, um, and I'll let you know who the winners are in two weeks. What do you do to win? Are you, you ready? Drum roll, everybody. Oh, that was pathetic. Do it again. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Three people are going to win a full set that's seven cookbooks of Simply Too Good To Be True. Three people are going to win the full set. That's right. I'm going to pick just how do you do that though? There's a catch. All you've got to do is like, share, and then in the comments, write simply the number two good. Just remember the simply is with a Y. A few of you are putting I. So simply, hashtag simply the number two good. And you could be a winner of the seven books. Now, if you want more tips and recipes, go to my fabulous website, www.simplytogood.com.au. You'll find it also there, how to join up to the newsletter. It's free, it's fabulous. Uh, you know, it's been so much fun this season. Thank you guys for being with me on the journey. And I will see you in two weeks. So take care now. Bye. <laughs>